security is to me one of the best ways to get in good with a customer and really capture everything every bit of their spend uh, because and you tell me if i'm off base here uh, if you solve a customer security problem mm -hmm. what else wh why wouldn't they trust you with everything else because everything else is secondary frankly right absolutely i mean that's very large um, because people very rarely will switch from a security provider because of exactly what you said you, you trust them and they know your inside they know your confidential stuff so you're going to bring them in for the other products as well. So it's very much a trust-based relationship. So while you're talking, maybe do a quick little introduction of yourself too. Sure, I've um, had an interesting career. So I've been a network engineer for a small retailer called Walmart. And from there, I entered a small Arkansas company. And then um, from there, I uh, became uh, a wide area network designer and network operations and SOC operations uh, manager for a large company uh, called FIS. Uh, so love that company, great company, uh, excellent team. Yeah. I have to say that because they were great with my career. Um, in taking care of over 20,000 financial institutions and most of the government, including the IRS. Um, so, but um, the reason I left, people are like, well, why'd you leave? Well, uh, I went 10 years without a full day off because as you can imagine, uh, banks like are being attacked yeah. and attacked and attacked. <laughs> so, right? I was smiling. <laughs> so once my kids left home, I'm like, what do I really want to do? Because even at, at FIS, I was uh, constantly consulting banks, small, medium, gargantuan uh, government, how, how to shore things up, taking care of their DDoS attacks, et cetera, et cetera. So it gave me very good. But I used to complain to my, at that time, uh, time a TW Telecom rep, man, you know, the carrier should really be taking the brunt of this. We're spending millions of dollars. I think you guys should be spending it. So that's what I did. I came over uh, to uh, CenturyLink because this is what I enjoy doing, the, straight up. Um, so why CenturyLink? There's a couple of things here. First of all, not new in the security business. Um, I don't think people understand that. Yeah, it, let, it, let me explain why that is. Secret. It is, and, and this is why. Um, like, you came from Global Crossing, yes. right? Uh, I used to do business with Global Crossing, and then, TW Telecom, et cetera. What was Global Crossing built for? It was built Network. for the internet, yeah. right? Yeah. And then we acquired and acquired. And so our network is so large, that it's like the spider web of the internet. Even Iran has to ride those rails. It's kind of scary, right? Yeah. But we can watch them. Um, so because of that, we're able to sense things very closely. And then while other uh, organizations have spent billions in cellular, we don't do cellular. So we already been protecting things like the Super Bowl broadcast. If you were a terrorist, it'd be great to say, you know what I think about, you know, I'm, a, I'm from Green Bay, so I don't want to talk about the Super Bowl too much. But um, so you have streaming <laughs> these videos. Yeah, not anymore. Um, of course, I'm in Chicago. Um, so, so at any rate, uh, they knew security inside and out, working with agencies. Well, the challenge there is, our, our executive management went, why don't we productize this stuff? We have these, this visibility that no one else has. Why don't we productize it and help them to protect themselves? So with that, these are metrics, and they're important metrics. Uh, to give you an idea, it even blows my mind. 1.3 billion security events per day. Okay, that's, that's per day. So I'm ex-military, Army. I don't know if anybody else is. Sorry. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was my a corporate version of the military. <laughs> you are. My brother, my brother was Air Force. He got to be in hotels and I ate there. But uh, aside from that, no bitterness. Um, so because of that, we're able to be like that. Yeah, the special, the special forces, right? PJs. All special forces respect PJs, right? From mm -hmm. the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So we're that special forces. We see so much that other organizations may not deal with that security event for years. We're seeing that every day. Um, C2s is very big. What is a C2? Well, I just got into your computer and I'm controlling stuff from your computer. Are you the in one your that's turned on my computer? Actually, yeah. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, and I want, you know. But uh, <laughs> Are you making that window pop up every time? And other things, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so, so C2s are that control. A lot of organizations, and I have also advised law enforcement. I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I want people to understand this is field experience. I'm that grizzled old sergeant that's been through battles. I got a few scars, yeah. DDoS scars. Uh, and, and so, you know, you, I understand what it's like to be in your custom shoes. Okay, I know that feeling. So C2s, uh, like even with law enforcement, we know somebody bad is doing something to your organization, but you gotta get a warrant. 
and you got to go through the bureaucracy. Oh, this is going to take about a week while you're under attack. So again, our executive manager decided, you know what, that, no, no, no. Because we see the stuff, because we have real intel, we know for a fact it's the Russian mafia, mm -hmm. they're wow. into the systems, we're going to take them out. They're off the internet. Done. We're not waiting for a warrant. We're taking care of you. So that's very, very huge when you're under attack. You don't need bureaucracy. And if you know, listen to me, Jabber, you've probably seen the rest of them here. We don't really need to do a whole lot. I do have a lot of DDoS attack scars. Why? Because way back when they started out, I was there and banks were losing millions and millions. So who was the quickest? It was CenturyLink. You know, um, we're, we still sell internet services. Absolutely. Actually, we still make money on pot slides. Yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't know that. Reason. Yeah, okay. we do. Right. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Um, but everybody needs internet. Yes. And uh, we always say, why the heck would you uh, sell a customer internet without DDoS protection? Absolutely. I use the analogy of, uh, do you have a lock in your house? Right. Do you use it? Um, so, <laughs> Depends on where you live. In yeah. Green Bay, they probably don't. No. And, 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 you know, and there's people that still leave their car doors unlocked. Oh, yeah. And again, yeah. with the police department, you hear people go, I can't believe somebody stole my car. Well, did you have keys in there? Well, yeah, but nobody's ever done it before. <laughs> that analogy is DDoS. I'll give you a quick war story. I got a few of them of one customer that said, you know, I can't see myself spending money on DDoS, Rick. I'm like, I understand. I don't want to spend money on life insurance. So the doctor says I got six months to go. Yeah. Um, but yeah. well, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. In about eight months, they called us back and said, oh, my God, can you take care of us? Well, we can. We'll get the contracts out. But it's not like you're already on contract where we're going to be able to take care of you in five minutes because that's about what we do. DDoS mitigation is done about five minutes with a 15 minute SLA. Okay, that's very quick. Wow. So he said, Oh my goodness, he lost $1 million in 24 hours. And he would have never thought his business was going to be attacked. He thought he was not going to. So it's not a matter of, remember, these bots are looking for you. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of if, when, when are, when are you going to be DOS? So if you rely on that internet circuit, if it's down, will that bother you? Right. Well, if it's under DDoS, it's down. So that would bother you. Okay. Well, why don't we talk about some of the products and services that, yeah. you, that you have within the security? So system. this is very quickly. We have a lot of them. So two things I'd like people to remember is the first one is think about CenturyLink for security. Number two, you don't have to sell it. We have experts. We have security architects. We have people that will do that for you. Just get us in front of the person who can sign the check mm -hmm. for security. Sometimes that's not the network person. So you're gonna have to find out, is it the owner, is it someone else? So think about that. The second very large thing uh, is that we're agnostic. I've designed, we're uh, right here in Chicago, very large company. They only had AT&T and Verizon. I designed with them, our, which we're gonna go into, our adaptive network security. So the takeaway from this, because we could talk for hours, right? 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 Oh, yeah. The takeaway is Sentry does security well, mm -hmm. sees like no one else sees, does it as fast, and it's agnostic. It doesn't matter who you're doing business with now. And so when you say agnostic, that means it's over the top. Yeah. So you don't have to have any other ser services with CenturyLink, but you can um, bring CenturyLink just for, to secure the network or secure Absolutely. Um, individuals. Correct. So there's a lot of competitors out there. Yep. The MSSP space is oh, really- Everybody's taking off your shingle. Yeah, I mean, everyone's just adding an extra S to their MSP yep. business. Now they're an MSSP. Yep. Um, talk about the backbone that you have. So how many socks do you have? Uh, how many, are you doing any kind of um, testing with uh, white hat hackers or black hat hackers? Anything well, there, if, you, if you can imagine it, we're doing that um, because of our size. We're right. target. Some of the agencies are target that we take care of. Um, you know, there, there obviously there's things you can't talk about. But for example, we've got fake companies. Well, we let them attack. Yeah, let's see how they do this. And we have PhD scientists that reverse engineer the malware. Um, and I'll talk a, a little further just because of the, the time of how we're able to do some of this stuff. So if you can imagine the intelligence, we have it. That's the, the bottom line. And you're right. Everybody's hanging out their shingle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to use another analogy that I use. I'm full of analogies. I can't help it. Um, so you're getting ready to go to war. You're getting ready to go into battle and your life is on the line, but the military is giving you a choice of commander. One guy has 500 certificates from West Point. He looks really sharp. Boy, does he look sharp. And then you over, look over to the right, and there's this guy you know, with a cigar, and his face is all grungy, and he's got an M16 with him, and he's got an M16 machine gun. You, know, you, know, couple, you, know, you can see holes from where he's been shot. But, <laughs> but, but he has survived like 10 battles. Can I ask you who you're going to go with? I'll go with that. You're guy. going with that guy. Heck yeah. So same thing. We have gone through so much. So there's a lot of people out there, 
And I'm not going to diss them, and I'll tell you why. Because we're short over 2 million cybersecurity professionals right now. Uh, by 2021, the last article I read, you can Google it, they're looking at a shortage of 3.2. So we have these people, and these people can be used for you. Not only that, they're highly experienced. So if you have a security incident- Can I just pause you really sure. quick? I want the audience to hear that, that stat, because that we talk about all the time as a silver bullet when you're talking with uh, a customer uh, about their security needs. Can you just share that stat one more time? The number of, yeah. the well, we've got, I don't know exactly which number it is, so tell me. Two, uh, two million. Oh, the million. stat of, of uh, yeah, 2.1 is estimated right now of a shortage of security people mm -hmm. qualified. That's why companies are taking people from apps. They're taking them from networking. They're mm -hmm. taking them from wherever they can get them, right? And by 2021, you're looking above 3.2. 3.2. Mm -hmm. uh, and and they get, it's good for me, but it's bad for companies. They get paid pretty decent. They get paid so really well. I had to do a budget. Uh, one bank said, I just, we're going to open up our own side. Can you tell us how much that would cost? So I did. And I always remember this. Just a man, one person per shift, 24 by 7 sock. This is not the equipment. This is not the technology. This is only the humans. It will cost you $1 million a year in salary. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, and you're going to have a 25 to 30% attrition because they're going to leave. They're going to have to hire some more because somebody else, because HR, we all know HR. Sorry, mm -hmm. we don't give more than 3% raise. Security people are getting 10, 25% raises. So you can't compete. CenturyLink can compete. So, you can get that back. so we tell our partners there's a shortage of IT talent. Um, when you look at the security field, in, no, it's, yeah. it's even smaller. Right. There's such a small pool. And then um, nine times out of 10, I mean, even you express, you're talking about your background, nine times out of 10, it's a, a, net, a network guy or gal mm -hmm. that uh, that's where they started. And now they're, they're the CISO. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now they might have a, a certification or two. And so um, your customers can't find the talent that's needed to protect them. And I guarantee you, they don't have a million dollars to build their own stock. Mm -hmm. And so why not lean on a company like CenturyLink that's trusted, tried and proven uh, with the resources that you bring to the table? Absolutely. I think that's a huge Absolutely. value. So one of the very popular uh, things that we have is uh, our cloud-based UTM. We call it adaptive network security. Okay. And again, it's agnostic. Remember that. Mm -hmm. We don't care who you're doing business with. We're able to take care of you. So um, rather than just go through a sales point, I thought I'd go through case studies. Yeah, right? that's so, great. A few, a few, uh, that's how we learn. Uh, absolutely. Like, like I said, my that or, or we're tackling it. So. Me too. My daughter, daughter says I have a, the memory of a goldfish. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, here's the problem. So this organization needed to um, be secure and turn up remote locations, all right? Uh, I don't know if you know who this organization is, but when you see cranes out there, and very large equipment, yeah. so they may go into a, a city or someplace, you know, temporarily mm -hmm. and, and have to turn up uh, a location. You know, installing a firewall, programming the firewall, having the personnel to go out there and do that um, takes a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so each site, has to have their own firewall, make sure that their firewall is kept up to date. Oh, we're gonna change the rule set, make sure it propagates. And as much as all those auto tools say they will, I can't tell you how many times they miss things and you gotta go into it manually, right? Um, and the, the network performance was such. Now this company does huge 3D diagrams. It's huge, so they, their throughput is important, right? So the solution was they came to us for adaptive network security. They're already on MPLS. Again, it's agnostic. I can use it with MPLS, without MPLS, with cable modems, whatever you want. Um, and so we put that out there um, and look, all locations are connected together. Uh, and you also can have a location uh, participate in the MPLS. So it can participate as part of it as well. So it doesn't have to be just the internet. You can you can hybrid it. So let me just uh, dumb this down. So uh, new locations uh, added. If it's uh, the customer building this out, mm -hmm. they're going to have to do the firewall and and set all the security settings and everything. Right. It's a human that likely will make a mistake yeah. potentially, and it could be detrimental to the company like massively. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so why not hire a central link just to take that on um, so that there isn't a human error and there's a, a specific process in place that every box gets checked every time. And there's another big reason why you want, whether you're, whether you're medium or large company, 
we already have customers out there. That you think of the very large global corporations out there are using this product. Well, what does that do? It puts pressure on us to really make sure, right? Well, so since you're a medium business, right? Maybe you have 10 doctors, office clinics, whatever it might be that are all going through our firewalls. You're benefiting from these large corporations and us tweaking that. And one really exciting thing that's come that we're doing now um, is we have what's called adaptive threat intelligence, which I'll go into. But that now feeds adaptive network security. And what that means is we find out, again, I always pick on the Russian mafia because they were my nemesis in my past. Um, respect them. They're my Lex Luthor. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. They are the Russian mafia. But I could be listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So don't say anything yeah, bad. Tell. So I'm not saying anything bad about them, but they were a challenge. So say we find that, hey, the Russian mafia is starting to send out ransomware from this IP address. Our threat intelligence senses that. We automatically make a rule set in those firewalls. You have now just benefited. So now a small protected. business is benefiting from the you, the you bet. Instead of waiting for the 24 hours or you know 48 hours for your laptop to update that you keep shutting off because you can't play World of Warcraft, right? <laughs> so so that's that's huge. Again, you're getting a big corporation and big corporations working with us, getting the benefits of all that engineering state of the art stuff. And here's what's really cool. So the first first thing that the team, the sales team said was, so how much more is this adaptive threat intelligence gonna cost folks that are already on our adaptive network security? Not a dime more, they're benefiting from the region. Wow. Yeah, so that's huge. That's you're good. getting the cutting edge, not the bleeding edge, because mm -hmm. then you're gonna, you're, you know, you have issues. Yeah. You're gonna get the cutting edge technology. So before we go to the next slide, because I want to talk a little bit more about DDoS, but um, like give me, what, what's CenturyLink's like top competitor? Like who, who do you compete against? Like who do you view as a competitor? Like the Chicago Bears don't really see the Green Bay Packers as a competitor. Well, no, you got to win first. Uh, yeah. And so <clears throat> tell me what's more. I'm going to be escorted out. <laughs> oh, thank you, folks. And really, I'm a New England Patriots fan, and so like the whole NFL is not really. I think we all got to agree Kansas City should have won. Let's get back to security. All right, all right. So, like, who is a competitor to CenturyLink? Well, in all honesty, everybody in cybersecurity is. But, you know, you're going to have your, you know, I don't want to say names, but your other big carriers. But they it, have three initials. Is that what that be one? Well, there's, there's, and some of them have a bigger word. Um, but remember, I want to bring this back. Who is investing in security as a portion of their business? Now, I don't know their books. Mm -hmm. But... Is anybody getting ready to be focused on 5G right now? Yeah, there might Our, be. Yeah, so we're there doing might, security. So we're, yeah. we're, you know, we're pumping a lot in. <laughs> All right, so let's get on the uh, topic with uh, DDoS. Right. And uh, so what type of DDoS attacks do you get? Are you going to see? Uh, Everything. Um, I mean, you've got, you've, you've got, uh, your volumetric is still your largest, probably 90%, 89%. And what volumetric means is, um, you know, we've got a room of about seven people here. You and I are talking, you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk. For those of you that don't know what DDoS is, um, make it simple. Now, instead of just you talking, you're talking, and then all of a sudden somebody else is talking, another one's talking, et cetera. So I got a question from the audience. Tom is Great. asking, um, do you need to be a big guy to worry about DDoS? Absolutely not. Um, for example, Here's the thing about DDoS. DDoS many times isn't the attack itself. It's a smoke screen. I'll use financial industry. You know, I've, I've designed for manufacturing for all the different things, but let's face it, most of my career has been retail and finance. Those are the big ones that get hit, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they're, get, they're beefing up their, their companies. So now I'm gonna go after smaller ones. So if I, can, if I can distract you with the DDoS, I'm gonna come around and for example, do illegal wire transfers. I'm gonna have your whole team so busy worrying about this DDoS, that I'm going to use other threats to get into it. Um, yeah, because the big corporations are going to be locked down mm -hmm. for the most part, mm -hmm. right? And so the way that um, these, these hackers get in is through smaller entities. Yeah. Is that right? Ab well, absolutely. You know, I've seen one small village police department um, that was taken in, and they were trying to go from the village police department to the county police department to the state to, and, and pull it right into the national. Because why? Small village police departments don't have security people. They don't have the knowledge. Um, they think they're small. They don't, they're not yeah, going to get attacked. They're insignificant. So, so, so Target, now we will talk, you know, it's, it's yeah, public, right? So, so Target, my daughter was a manager at Target. 
and where she is, if you don't ask for, if you want a card, red card, they yeah. get disciplined now. Yeah. They're trying to make up for the loss that they had. It's Nothing against annoying, Target. Target's a great company. As a consumer, though, that's the annoying question. Well, I'll actually get get it because now they're. I know that they're 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 yeah. on their on their game now. But the point of that is, so they could they absorb whatever you know. I don't know the number, so I'm not going to say it. But a, a significant part of their business loss they absorb. A small medium business cannot absorb it. If they get to the point where where a DDoS hits them and they can't get up and going for three four days. Their reputation's bad, and good luck trying to recover mm. on top of that. So don't assume because you're small, you're not a target. So do you have to have an all centrally link network to have DDoS? No, because, well, if you have a slash 24, right? So so at least 256 so IP addresses. IP at slash 24, we can take care of anybody because then we'll route it towards scrubbing centers with VGP. So, you, so slash 24 with any provider out there, anybody. doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be centrally. An ASN number, right, if you have yeah. a and a slash 24, doesn't matter. Well, and here's the other thing, and for the other companies that may have, you know this, if you're, if you're a medical facility or some other manufacturing or something that, you usually have two carriers, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't it be great if you could just go, you're under a DOS pack, can I just go to one side? Absolutely, you can just go to us, we'll take care of us and that other carrier. So that's Any other questions on the no, I think that's okay, it great. Now. Okay. All right. So uh, that's DDoS. So adaptive threat intelligence. Um, this has been really gaining ground. Uh, we're putting this into all our products eventually. Um, so here's an example from a motion uh, picture uh, company. Um, they were having problems because many times they would utilize um, offshoring mm -hmm. help. And I can tell you again from my past, not talking about me too much, but the hardest people I had problem was they didn't get care about United States laws. Mm. Whatever, I'm in this country and I'm only costing you 50 cents an hour. Right. So I'm gonna do whatever I want. And they would use torrent and they would gamble, they would do all kinds of stuff. So they had some of the issues with introducing malware into, into, their, into their network. So they uh, got adaptive threat intelligence from us. And again, because of the size of our global, it's been estimated about 80% of all TCP packets will hit our rails at some point. And we store that data, uh, you know, about 115 million netful sessions a day. Wow. Um, so we don't see the confidential packet, just to make that clear, we don't, we're not spying, right. but we do know from our intelligence that 1.2.3.4 is propagating ransomware or malware. We're able to block that and stop it so you don't have to deal with it in the first place. So that's what they did. And they were able to use adaptive threat intelligence to tweak um, their equipment to make sure that they're protected. So there's other providers that offer this. But how does CenturyLink differentiate themselves from the, the, the threat intelligence offer that you have? Being the Air Force guy you are, um, a squad has the intelligence of what would you say? A couple blocks, right? 10 men, seven men, a platoon, maybe a, a city or village, right? Mm -hmm. um, do they still have AWACS? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much is an AWACS fee, right? Quite a bit. Yeah. What What's the ultimate? Maybe the secret thing we have on the moon, or if not that, we have we have a satellite. Yeah. Look at CenturyLink as that satellite. So there's other organizations out there, right? Their threat intelligence is only as good as what they can see, hmm. because we see so much. And on top of that, we also uh, take feeds from other uh, sources as well. So that's the reason why. Um, if you're able to see a threat within a city, for example, you can keep it from a terrorist attack, but if you can see the whole world and you're listening to everything, you're able to do a lot more. So that's a different So um, other companies, I didn't know this, other companies may have a uh, smaller uh, visual Correct. Uh, of, of the, the threat. Absolutely, of the internet. Interesting. Because again, they all have to, just about all have to ride a rail at some point. Yeah, right. Okay. You're from Global Crossing. Yeah. Carrier's carrier. You've heard that term, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody had to ride. And guess who's got that? We do. So. Awesome. All right. All right. So log secure monitoring. log monitoring. If you've ever heard the term SIM, right? Yeah. So it's watching everything in, in, in your environment, coming in from the internet, things of that nature. Um, you've heard of companies like Splunk, yep. the most known. Um, a ton of companies will buy these SIMs. And again, they'll lose their expert because there's even more of a demand for SIM experts. Um, or they're constantly tweaking it and they're losing a lot of money. What eventually happens is it becomes a boat anchor. They're done. 
they're, they just give up. Uh, I've seen that so many times. So this is CenturyLink. We're not partnering with somebody here. This is CenturyLink Secure Log Monitoring. It's a virtual collector, and we utilize our, they can utilize our threat intelligence and even instant response. And there's an app on their phone. So again, these small, medium organizations, the network guy or whomever, or their one security person they have, can be alerted that, hey, you know, our security operations center sees something fishy going on in your environment. And they can either escalate the ticket from the app, they can call the SOC or REC. Um, and I do want to make that too, I, I forgot to mention this. Nothing's more frustrating than bureaucracy. I hate bureaucracy personally. I don't want to call the knock to say I have a security event. I know I have a security event, that's my job. And then they're going to open a ticket, then they're going to send it over to the SOC to make sure, nope, it's not a network issue, maybe it's a security issue, then the SOC gets a ticket, et cetera. If you, if you got something going on with us, or with the bad people, when you call our SOC, you're direct with an analyst, a security analyst. You're not getting all that bureaucracy. So whether it's advanced threat intelligence, whether it's DDoS, whether it's secure log monitoring, you're getting that security operations center as a team. So you hear the term um, uh, alert fatigue. Yeah, absolutely. So how did, how, how Brass does bell syndrome like help with that? So with secure log monitoring, for example, um, you can, in, in utilizing threat intelligence, there's different levels of intelligence. So you can have it set, for example, uh, we want to be called anytime the threat is higher than 60, we use numbers, 60% or higher, 80% okay. or higher, 100% or higher. Again, we have the data analysts, we have PhDs, we have intelligence, we have agencies we work with. We know for a fact that's a terrorist trying to get into your system. There's no doubt, it's 100%. So we're, we're going through all that and bleeding all that noise. So you're not, I call the brass bell effect, um, where it's the bell of the buildings ringing so much, you don't hear it anymore. And you're right, you have that fatigue. And again, if you've got a small staff, they're already dealing with the servers, they're dealing with the network. Yeah. The biggest one that they're dealing with is users, right? Um, right. That's swear to God, it's not them. It's gotta be the technology. Um, so, you know, that's what you're dealing with. Can you really afford to only be giving 50% of your attention to security. In the old days, you can't, you could. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's devastating when it happens. So it's good to have a seasoned team watching all that. I saw a stat that um, every breach is cost the company $4 million. Yeah, they're all there. It's, it's, it's huge. And, and again, medium and small businesses, it costs the company. I was listening to an FBI, I don't know if there's, there, I'm, I'm part of InfraGuard, which is Homeland Security, okay. and it helps businesses, et cetera. And we had an FBI agent that was talking that he hit me really truly. He said, you know, if somebody has a physical bomb and they blow up a factory, right? Thankfully, there's no lives lost, but those 1,000 people just lost their jobs yeah. and their children and their homes and their car. Mm -hmm. We can't see that attacker. It's cyber security. Yeah. It's cyber attack. But guess what? You just still cost 1,000 people their jobs. Yeah, you're because right. you don't see it. Be, you know, I could use a bread twist tie to lock my front door, yeah. right? I could, and I could psychologically fool myself. You don't want to get too scared, and you don't want to use fear mm -hmm. to sell security, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to say, Rick, you're going to buy something, you better buy life insurance. I'm going to, you know, I don't like personality. I'm not going to buy yeah. it. So, and depending on what value you have in your house, that twist tie might be okay for a little shed. But then you're going to have Simply Safe for you know three hundred thousand dollars house. If you have millions of dollars in your house, you're going to really be up to see. Mm -hmm. And once again, for you folks that are out there, um, you don't have to think about all this stuff. Just get us in front of the customer. For me, what I personally do is I don't even I don't even bring a slide of our security products. I want to know them, their personality, mm -hmm. their company, and what makes me feel good is before I leave, they go, well, that's you know, tell me what you can do for us. So let us do that for you. Because again, most, I'm gonna guess, are network background people. Don't be intimidated by security. Mm -hmm. If you're too afraid, you're not gonna do anything. Right. And if you're not afraid of nothing, you're not gonna do anything. So bring us in uh, just to talk security. Yeah, so um, one of the things that, uh, again, maybe a little plug on Avant with, is we built uh, what we call an interactive quick assessment. Yes. So this is a great uh, tool to use. We have a security-based uh, interactive quick assessment we call them IQAs. And that'll give you, uh, uh, ask all the right questions to that customer so that you can get 
I'll hand that over to CenturyLink and then they can evaluate and say, yeah, this is a great opportunity for us or not. Or our engineers will evaluate it and say, hey, CenturyLink is the right provider. We should engage them. Uh, we, we call it, uh, you know what, we don't, we don't want our partners um, in the deep end without a life jacket. Absolutely. And uh, so what I've heard today was, uh, it's not a matter of if, it's, it's a matter of when. It is. Uh, why the heck would you try to do security on your own? Because the, there's 3 million job openings uh, as of 2021. Let's call it now. Uh, because it's probably underestimated anyway. And so the talent out there, it's almost non-existent. And the turnover is you know, ridiculous because other companies are trying to find these people and they're paying way more than market value. Probably. Well, and here's one thing I want to leave with for all of you out there because you're all in business to make money. So I went into a, a client just, just to introduce myself um, and talk a little bit about SLM. When we left, the client says, I don't even know where to begin. I don't, I don't have any policies. I don't have any procedures. I don't have any playbooks if I'm under DDoS attack. I don't know what to do. I make bread. They're not a bread maker. I just made that. Up. Right. But so what we ended up doing is we had another three, four meetings and right and so what we have on the table right now is a six month, $434,000 consulting because we do professional services. We go to the next slide. Yes. We, no, maybe not yep. professional services. We actually will go in, we'll advise them. We'll help them. Cre we'll even type up the policy procedures. And if they want, they paired up an engineer with them so that when they found problems with their equipment, security flaws, he typed it in and took care of it right then. They didn't have to wait another couple months. So um, that's, that's the kind of thing and that's the kind of revenue you're, you're looking at. Um, and so more than likely, we talked to the CISO and he, he said, if this goes good in the six months, I just might continue this on. I was thinking about hiring an FDE, but you know, you got, he brought the point. You got, if you guys are that sergeant that's gone through the battles, I might just continue this contract. Yeah, I mean, and nobody is, uh, it, I guess every company is gonna get hit at one point in time. Yeah, nobody the average knows. security person's gonna cost you about $150,000 a year salary, $200,000 a year all in with benefits. And really, they're and gonna get sick <laughs> at so some point. <laughs> if I'm a mid-market business and I, I'm, I'm the CEO of that business and I'm, I'm gonna hire my own CISO, mm -hmm. that CISO is still gonna engage CenturyLink or yes, somebody else. Right. So avoid the cost of the CISO and just go with a CenturyLink that can do the whole thing soup to nuts. Absolutely, and, and, and if you want, you, know, you keep that one or two people and have them work on your strategy and your yeah. future and have us do that daily stuff for you. Awesome. Uh, Alex, is there any questions on the line? Nothing coming through, but um, you, know, you, you were part of our relationship That's for right. a very long time. Yeah. Um, and in fact, you were actually, I think you were at the very first Special Forces. Yes. Uh -huh, I was on. Yeah. T -t -t Tell us what that experience was like. Well, you know, the thing is, is I, I'm more and more impressed with the channel and how important the channel is. Um, that's, that's reality. You are their trusted advisor. You know, I've, I've met with some of some of your, they've been doing business with the people for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They trust them. And if they say, I recommend this, they buy. And we take that at something like seriously. I personally do. So nothing's perfect. We were all technology, but you give me somebody that'll walk through the fire with me, not just say, no, that's not our policy. Mm -hmm. oh, I hate that, right? Sorry, that's not our policy. No, we will go through the fire with you. So um, I would say Vaughn was really, I like Yvonne. You know, I've, I've been watching you guys grow. Um, that's very impressive to me. Yeah, and likewise too. I mean, as, as Shane mentioned, we're the number one provider. A lot of it through our level three relationship, where, where you came from too. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking to very much more and more. You got to get into security. Uh, I, I, I hate to preach that, but um, I knew that with my career. I went from networking. Mm -hmm. I, and, and everybody remembers Banyan Vines, Novell. Man, am I getting old. I always went Green Bay, I'll use Green Bay. They made ice for Chicago. They made ice for everybody, the brewers, you know, and then they realized, hey, somebody invented the refrigerator. My family, my grandpa got into refrigeration. Same thing. If you want to start making the big money now, you, you, it's security. It's, it, I don't know if they make a lot of money on pots lines. They may, if there's a lot of them. <laughs> but, uh, there is just, some magic. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to, Get up on the security. Again, you don't have to be an expert. Don't let it intimidate. You're the MD. We're the cardiologist. You know somebody's got a heart issue. You're not going to try to diagnose it. Bring us in. I like that analogy. That's a great way to end. You know, CenturyLink uh, is a longtime uh, friend and family of, of Avant. 
And uh, we're so excited. And thank you so much for your time, Absolutely. Rick. And, and Jessica, thank you. Um, I got to admit, I learned a lot today. Good. And I hope you on the phone learned a lot. Uh, if there's any, we will have this recording up on in the Pathfinder. So for partners, you can go in the uh, back office side and, and uh, search CenturyLink uh, Spotlight and you'll, you'll find it um, right there. But um, thanks for your time and, and attention. And we'll see you next month on the next Spotlight. So thank you very much.